Welcome to E.8.2. Today we are going to describe the recycling of metal, glass, plastic, and paper. And we're going to outline the benefits. And before we get into this, we should just again just reiterate the idea of reducing because the processes of all this recycling does require a lot of energy. And our energy is still very much um, connected to greenhouse gases. So we do want to reduce how much recycling we want to do, um, but recycling is still better than, of course, having to get new materials from scratch out of nature. So try to think about that as we go through. Today in this video, we're going to sort of go step by step. We'll show you how each one is recycled, and then we'll just do a quick little summary um, at the end there. So we're going to start off with um, metal. And so I'm just going to quickly play a video for that. Ferrous and non-ferrous. Ferrous scrap is scrap iron and steel that comes mainly from old cars. Non-ferrous scrap metal includes aluminum, copper, lead, and nickel. And the best part is, metals can be recycled indefinitely without losing any of their properties. Each year, North American auto plants build millions of cars. Eventually, they end up here, at a scrap metal recycling facility. It takes about two days to process the raw material, mostly old cars and appliances. Crane and bulldozer operators scan the raw material as they gather and stack it. They're looking for anything they can't process. Propane tanks, glass, or heavy iron that will not shred and that could cause damage to the machinery. An inspector goes into the stockpile to check the material more closely, then signals the crane operator that he can proceed with the next load. The crane's grapple delivers load after load onto a conveyor belt that leads into a shredder. The belt speeds up or slows down according to the weight of the material to feed just the right amount into the shredder. Here's the feed box that contains the shredder laid open. An inspector checks it daily for damage. There's a lot of wear and tear on this machinery. An 1800 kilogram drum grabs the material as it comes off the conveyor and forces it into the shredder. Its giant hammers pound away at the cars, mattresses, and other recyclable items, shredding them into fist-sized chunks. An industrial vacuum sucks out bits of rubber or glass mixed in with the shredded steel. The steel pieces stick to these magnetic drums. Anything else falls through to a conveyor belt below. Here, pickers remove any unwanted material caught on the steel pieces. And the cleaned, shredded steel is ready for shipping to customers like steel mills and foundries. The material the magnetic drums don't collect goes on for more processing. There's precious non-ferrous metal, such as copper or brass, mixed in with the shredded debris. It all goes into a machine called a trommel, where a rotating drum separates the material by size. Any leftover residue is just trash. But before it goes into a landfill, an inspector checks it to make sure no valuable material has slipped through. The material from the trommel is evenly dispersed onto a conveyor that takes it to a machine called an eddy current separator. Inside, a rotating magnetic drum creates a strong magnetic field that repels non-ferrous metals right up and over a barrier into a storage bin. Any material that doesn't make it over the barrier goes through the separator one more time, just in case there's still some valuable non-ferrous metals mixed in. A conveyor belt carries out the worthless residue to a trash heap.
A different conveyor belt carries the non-ferrous metal out of the separator and loads it into a bin for sale. It will go to another plant where they'll separate it by type of metal, mainly copper, brass and aluminum. After all that shredding, sifting and separating, here's what's left of the average used car. Take away the rubber, plastic and upholstery and you have some shredded steel and some valuable non-ferrous metals. That's a lot of useful material thanks to some efficient recycling. So as you can see there, it really starts out with magnets trying to separate the iron and then you can do some floating as well to separate aluminum from the other ones. So after that's been done, all the metals definitely have a high melting point. So all you need to do is get them melted and then you can reform them into a new shape. Now in terms of the advantages, the advantages are actually going to be the same for all of them. So I'm just going to put them all now and all of these apply to all of the other types of recycling. You're going to have less environmental damage than by obtaining new materials. So in terms of metal, metal comes from mining, which can be very disastrous for the environment. So not having to get new iron or new aluminum through mining um, is a good advantage. It also produces less energy and thus greenhouse gases versus new materials. The entire production process of producing new aluminum or iron is going to cause more greenhouse gases than the recycling process. And of course, it's going to save our landfill space in the end. So our second type of material we're going to look at is glass. So let's see what happens when we recycle glass. The smashing story of recycled glass. Glass is an incredibly useful material because it can be recycled endlessly. Good news when you think over approximately 22,000 tons of it was recycled in Devon in 2008-2009. But how? To start with, glass containers are collected, either from curbside boxes, bags, bins, or from recycling banks. The glass is then taken to a recycling depot in your area. In most parts of Devon, the sorting and separating of materials takes place at the curbside. All the glass is then delivered to a reprocessing company. Here, the glass is screened so contaminants like corks or metal lids can be removed. The glass is then crushed and sent to a company to be manufactured into new bottles or jars. Where this crushed glass, known as cullet, is sent very much depends on its colour. Clear glass tends to stay within the UK so it can be made into new jars or bottles, say for jam or whiskey. Green glass and brown glass is generally sent to countries such as France or Spain, where beer and wine is produced. Once the colour arrives at the glass factory, it is mixed with raw materials to begin the transformation into glass. These materials include sand, otherwise known as silicate, sodium carbonate and calcium carbonate. They are then melted down in a furnace exceeding temperatures of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. The glass produced is then moulded or mechanically blown into new shapes. The new containers are then sold to various companies to be packaged and put on the market as products that we know and love to begin the cycle again. A small proportion of our crushed glass, whether green, clear or brown, can be recycled into aggregate for building purposes. Some roads in Devon have been built or repaired using aggregate made from our recycled glass. So basically there, they're separated by color and then they're melted with sand or silicate, uh, limestone, which is calcium carbonate, and soda ash, which is sodium carbonate. And that together will make new glass. Again, the advantages over here would be about the same. On to our next one, plastics. Let's take a look what happens specifically with bottles. In Britain, we use 15 million plastic bottles a day. Most of these can be recycled into really useful things. Here's how. Bottles are separated from other rubbish by hand or machine. The bottles are then cleaned and sorted by plastic type using infrared. They are then sorted by colour, blue, natural, green and mixed. And are shredded, melted and reformed into pellets which can then be used to make fencing, plastic bags or more bottles.
So the main thing to realize about plastics is that there are many different types and so they're difficult to separate because our packaging um, is usually mixing different types together and unfortunately governments are not getting any legislation in to require um, packagers to make sure there's only one type of plastic in their packaging. So what ends up happening is a lot of plastic ends up being just downcycled which is it means it's being put for another use that's lower down. Um, but the stuff that is recycled can be melted into pellets and then can be remolded into a new shape. Sings us to our last one, paper. Following the paper trail. Paper is our most recycled material. In 2008 and 2009, Devon's residents recycled over 33,000 tons of it. So, a forest the size of 1,000 football pitches was saved from being cut down. But what exactly is involved in recycling paper? First of all, your local council collects the paper from your box, bin, bag or bank on collection day. It is then taken to the recycling depot in your area. In most parts of Devon, the sorting and separating of materials takes place at the curbside. There are some councils, however, who collect mixed recyclables. Where this is the case, they are taken to a depot where they are sorted by hand or using machinery. This tends to be used in more urban areas for efficiency reasons. From here, it is sold and sent to a paper mill. On arrival, the paper is checked for quality and contamination, then it is sent to be shredded and pulped. Pulp is needed to make paper as it contains an essential ingredient, cellulose fiber. Pulp for virgin paper, paper with no recycled content, is made from softwood trees such as pine as well as hardwood trees like birch which is costly for the environment. However, pulp can also be sourced from other materials including waste paper. But because paper can only be recycled four to six times as the fibers get shorter and weaker each time, some virgin material, usually wood chip, needs to be added to strengthen the pulp. This is one of the reasons it's so important that we reuse our paper as many times as possible. So, at the mill, once any large contaminants have been removed, the waste paper is cut into small pieces and turned into a mushy substance by adding it to water. This is pulp. It is then sent to be cleaned, in which any smaller contaminants, like staples, are removed. It is then stripped of ink and colour using chemicals. After this, the pulp is sprayed in a continuous wide jet onto a huge, fast-moving screen, forming a watery sheet. On the screen, water drains from the pulp and the recycled fibers bond. The sheet is then fed through rollers and any excess water is squeezed out. Next, the paper sheets are sent through heated rollers which dry the paper, after which the coating is added, giving the paper its smooth or glossy texture. On average, a mile of paper a minute passes through these rollers. Finally, the finished paper is wound into a giant roll and removed from the paper machine. It is then stored in a warehouse and then sent to printers all over the country. The majority of Devon's paper is recycled into newsprint. Sometimes it can take only seven days from the time you put your newspaper or magazine in the recycling bin to it being sold back on the shelves in your local shop. So there we can see the paper is basically just chopped up and mixed with uh, calcium oxide and calcium carbonate and that will break it down into pulp. It can then be washed with water to remove ink and then to sort of bleach it, make it a white at the end, they'll use hydrogen peroxide. So again, the advantage is here you don't have to cut down um, trees and over here is going to be less energy overall than having to transport and process um, new paper and then you have less landfill space. And just, I guess, to reconnect back with the plastic there, a lot of people don't realize that the raw material for plastic is oil. So plastic industry is the oil industry as well.